What's up, guys? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. Thanks for being here, being subbed. If you're not, hit the button. And if you're listening on YouTube, hit the like. It's like walking in the room and hitting that light switch. Let's brighten up the place and get into the real of reality TV. First, I just want to briefly talk about this Honey Boo Boo and Mama June situation. And I never watched that show. I never watched Toddlers and Tiaras. I never watched Honey Boo Boo. And I didn't watch Mama June from Not to Hot or whatever the freaking show was called. But there has been a lot of stuff about them in the news over the years. And one of the things that stood out to me news wise about them was the fact that Mama June. She definitely admitted to having a heavy, heavy drug problem. And we know that she got a reality show where she pretty much had her body redone, weight loss surgery, all that stuff. And it's just a hot mess. But, you know, it's kind of nice seeing equal opportunity dysfunction where it's not just seeing one ethnicity being put out there on front street on these reality shows but i digress i wanted to talk about this just a little bit because when i recently did wine is the new tea co-hosting on on wine with tasha k's youtube channel we talked about this a little bit and we had a little bit of a debate whether the mom was entitled to use the money as she pleased because she is the caretaker and mother of honey boo boo But the fact of the matter is that little girl, she has been the face and name and her real name is Alana or Elena. I'm not really sure how you even pronounce her name. If it was not for her, she wouldn't have had the access to all of the money that she did. So it's possible that the mom got a stipend and they gave her some sort of pay. But if it were not for the daughter, she wouldn't have any of what she had access to. So, you know, with that being said, she did a people exclusive where she's threatened to cut her mom off and slamming her for losing, quote, 500K to a bag of crack. (laughs) And this is why I wanted to talk about this, because I recently talked about this on wine is the new tea. And I pretty much said the same thing. So I, you know, I was like, well, I don't know. I believe everything is real, but it's possible. All of this could be getting played up for a storyline for the upcoming season of their reality show. I think it's called Mama June Family Crisis. And it's like, well, if she's really going to cut her mom off, then why is she even doing television with her? I would not want to have anything to do with her. But I don't know. It could be just a bit complicated. So in the People exclusive sneak peek at the show, at the episode, Mama June and her husband sit down with Pumpkin and Alana, Honey Boo Boo Thompson, to straighten out the money missing from Alana's Coogan account. And Pumpkin can be seen standing in front of a whiteboard with Alana's earnings and Mama June's transactions from the Coogan account. After cross-referencing Alana's various child star appearances, out-of-state taxes, and the money Mama June spent, Pumpkin reveals that there is $35,728 missing from Alana's funds. So when we recently talked about it, it was reported that that was about the amount that was remaining, not that was the amount that was used. So there's just a lot to unpack here. I'm not going to try to unpack it all, but I just wanted to talk about it really quick because they called her out and (laughs) it's it's just a mess. But she says to her, you lost 500,000 dollars to a bag of F and crack B. The show is just a hot freaking mess. They're a hot freaking mess. You know, the mom, Mama June, she had all of that surgery to lose all of that weight. Clearly, she's gained most of it back. But she's got eyelash extensions and hair extensions. Clearly, they're 
needing some sort of financial advising going on because they don't really know how to handle the type of money that they had access to coming in over all of these years because that girl is what, 18 or something at this point now? And she's pretty much been in the spotlight since she was a little girl doing toddlers and tiaras. But I just wanted to talk about that really quick because again, it's just a hot mess. All of this stuff that they're talking about now, it's not going to cause me to want to go and watch the show, but I just wanted to talk about it for a minute and you can let me know what you think about it. Do you feel that the mom had every right to use the money as she pleased? Or do you feel that she was wrong for doing what she did, especially knowing that she had a drug problem and should the daughter cut her off? And do you think the mom should have some sort of civil litigation against her? Not that it would help because where is she going to get the money? But anyway, you can let me know your thoughts about that. Now on to Love and Marriage DC. I recently watched the first part of the reunion as well as the season finale. It's just it's just so much and I really I uh, yeah yeah yeah. I, I know that Ashley there there's a lot of people that do not like Ashley. I actually want to like her. I really feel that Ashley is a hurt woman. I feel that she lashes out in ways because even though she says she's always in therapy, I don't really know if it's working because I feel like she's always lashing out at other people and their, and their marriages calling Clifton a sassy bee, you know, going off about Joy hiding the fact that she and Clifton were actually married and just, you know, all of the different things that she said about the thruple with regards to Joy and the friend and Clifton and that, you know, scenario, as well as, you know, just other things that she has said. And then all of this stuff coming out at the reunion about her pretty much saying that she's not happy. Well, she said she's happy 50% of the time. And that Quick is really not there a lot. I can only respect her that she was honest with the fact that she's not sure how much more she can take. And she's like, yeah, I don't know if I would want to continue in this marriage if it continues to stay the way that it is. I I was like, <laughs> at least she's honest, you know, but I don't think anything's going to change. Quick has made it very clear that he likes the way his life is. He is a workaholic. He's working all the time. He said he just started a new podcast and he's already always working. And for some people, I feel that even though you may like working, in some ways that work may be an out for you. And to me, just my personal opinion, again, everything over here is just my opinion, sharing things the way that I see it. I feel that because he has, maybe I'm not going to say he has an issue because of his height. I know some people say a lot of short men have a Napoleon complex. There could be some things to unpack there with that. But when it comes to his wife, not that he should control his wife. I'm not saying that he should ever be here to control his wife. But I feel that he also just really has an issue because she is a bit domineering and a bit of, you know, controlling in her actions. And sometimes he can't even really get a word in edgewise. I feel that it's not just because of the lifestyle that he has been able to afford them to live that he works so much. I kind of feel like he works so much to not have to be around her as much. And that's sad. So honestly, I feel that all of those things coupled up together, her feeling the way that she does, him, you know, being gone as much as he is, It's sort of a recipe for disaster and either they're going to just stay together for the sake of just, you know, just staying in the marriage just to stay in it or it may not it may not continue to work anymore. And I hate that for them because I do believe that he loves her and she loves him. But it's just so much with all of these different couples. I was happy that Irena was standing up for herself right or wrong. I was happy that she was standing up for herself when it came to Ashley because she, I feel a lot of times she will, for the sake of peace in the situation, she won't speak up because she knows that Ashley is a bit domineering. And I was happy that she was just like, no, you know, 
I'm going to say what I want to say. I'm going to say how I feel right now, Ashley, whether you like it or not. And so Ashley was on ready with the prop to, you know, act as if Arena's acting right now. And this is just a scene that she's putting on. But it's like, no, that's, I mean, that's how she really feels, whether you like it or not. Now, I will say, when it came to the season finale and the scene with Joy and Ashley at the store, I, although I understand Joy's feelings, my personal opinion is I really felt like Joy should have said, if she felt that way, she should have said that when they were at the wig pop-up shop versus after the fact when they were at the wig pop-up shop and they had a discussion about the thruple situation and that stuff and Joy was there with her friend, uh, Carmen. And if she really felt that way, then I feel like she should have said it then, not when Ashley's thinking, oh, we're we're cool, we're good, we're just going to try to make amends and move forward, even though Joy knows that I don't see it for her husband. She seems to be accepting and okay of that at this point. That's a conversation that she should have had with her when they did the sit down at the breakfast place when Ashley met up with Joy and Ashley said to her, like, you know, your husband is this and your husband is that. And Joy was just sitting there, like, taking it in calmly. And she's like, well, you know, I can try to move forward with you. I feel like she should have said that then. So I'll be honest, even though Ashley can be contentious and even sometimes a bit selfish in her actions of how she says things, because it's like, well, you hurt me. I'm going to hurt you more. I'm going to cut you. You you know, you gave me a paper cut. I'm going to I'm going to get a knife and slice you open to the white meat. I feel that I understand because she is that wounded adult a wounded child in an adult's body that she says is always in therapy, but seems to not be really getting the healing that she needs. And so if someone hurts her, she can't just take it like a woman to say, dang, that was rough. Although I don't understand it, I accept it. And if you don't want to be friends with me, that's cool. Instead, Ashley goes to the name calling and, the, you know, being childish. And you're never going to get anywhere with another adult acting that way. So even though I understood how she felt and somewhat agreed with her, it was honestly, in a way, making Joy look correct. When, to be honest with you, I don't believe that Joy was. I really believe that Joy had delayed a, a delayed reaction to Ashley and chose at that moment to do it then when in all honesty, it was kind of making it look like it was a scene for, oh, we know that this is like one of the last scenes for this, you know, season, the season's wrapping up and now I got to go there and I really got to go for the jugular. I didn't like it at all. I really didn't. It was making Joy look passive aggressive, really, because (laughs) Ashley thought, I'm here to help you pick out an outfit for uh, the um, Jamie what is it, retirement party? So I'm here to have fun with you, lighthearted, whatever. And then you're going to sit me down in this place to talk to me about you like me, but you love your relationship with your husband and Carmen more. Like, obviously you should. You know them more than you know, you know, Ashley. So I just really felt like it was making Joy look a bit weird honestly I don't even really know another word to use at this moment as I'm speaking about it but I understood Ashley's feelings she should she should have just not handled it in that way Joy wasn't right to handle it in the way that she handled it either but yet I digress there's just so much going on I as a whole liked how this cast was put together in terms of the people. I felt like the dynamics of them, even though Ashley can come across as pretty childish, I felt like the relationships and the marriages were more mature than what we've seen on the other love and man- love and marriage uh, franchises. And I do believe that Carlos really dropped the ball with this one because I believe Winters quit. I don't even know if the show's coming back. Ashley said over and over again that she didn't know if she was coming back. And none of them even know if the show is even being renewed because Winter had even mentioned that usually they'll let you know at the reunion 
that you're up for another season and they still haven't heard anything. And this reunion was filmed last year. So at Carlos, he has other focuses and other visions. And unfortunately, I feel like this show could have been the one to be the major game changer, even though we know that Huntsville was the first in the franchise. I like this one more than Huntsville. I really do. But unfortunately, Carlos... He's been handling things the way that he's been handling them. So with that being said, we'll see what comes next. But the first part of the reunion was crazy. Clifton <laughs> was calling quick Scrappy-Doo. And I said, oh, no, not Scrappy-Doo. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and so when Quick stood up, it almost it didn't even look like he stood up because he had been sitting down. And I, I'm not trying to make fun of it, but it's just like, oh, my God. This is crazy. So it ended with <laughs> with Quick standing up like he was about to run up and do something, which I don't believe that he was going to do. But anyway, guys, Ashley, 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 what is we going to do? I don't know if we can do anything. But anyway, you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section. So guys, thanks for being here, liking and subscribing. I'm Beth, just being beautifully honest. So until next time, I wanted to keep it brief, beautiful, and I'm going to say bye.